Bear Down Bears fans on today's episode of the Windy City Breeze. We're going to talk about the biggest position battles the Chicago Bears will have at OTAs. And it starts right now. If you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page, man. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel talking Chicago sports, how Chicago talk. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. So want to bring out some of the position battles that you're going to be focused on in OTAs. There's a ton of battles that I think are going to be happening, but what are the ones that we need to focus in the most on? What are the ones that are going to impact the Chicago Bears the most this season? I think that the number one for me, right, starting this off is that last spot on the wide receiver room. I think that you kind of know who your number one is, who your number two is, right? But there seems to be a little bit of a course correct with what Ryan Poles did in the draft this season by going out and getting Tyler Scott. Tyler Scott's probably going to make the team, but now you see Dante Pettis being signed. Now you have Bayless Jones on that. You're talking about the depth at that wide receiver position. I mean, you're talking about a lot of receivers on this team. Here's the receiver list right now. DJ, here's the guys that at least in a minimum right in my mind, you know we're going to make it. DJ Moore. Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, Equinamia St. Brown, Tyler Scott. That is five guys. They probably will end up taking six into the season. Who's going to be that next guy? Is it going to be Dante Pettis? Is it going to be Valish Jones? You've got Simba Walker there. I mean, like there, there's a lot of receivers on this team right now that, I mean, you could see guys get cut and get brought back to the practice squad, but this could be a course correct by Ryan Poles where Dante Pettis at a minimum, you know, he comes in, he's going to give you the special teams ability. And I think that you keep him on the team for that reason. Or do you lean into the Bayless Jones aspect of it where, yeah, he had a down season last season, but I think he's going to be able to bounce back. That's the guy that's going to finish out rounding out this wide receiver room. It's a very interesting one. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Drop Bayless Jones if you believe that Bayless is going to be the number one or drop Dante Pettis. Who do you think is going to take that last wide receiver spot? I find it, I would find it very surprising if the Bears ended up taking seven wide receivers into the season. So I think that that's one of the really, that's one of the really big spots that you can key in on here in OTAs when it comes to position battles because I don't think that's just right where people rank in the Y offense. I think that's like you have a job on the Bears. Now you don't. And I don't know if Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus and them are ready to just throw in the towel on Bayless Jones just yet. Let me know how you guys feel, man. Uh, the other one that I really want to keep a close eye on, there's actually a few position battles here that, that I'm really keeping a close eye on. But the, this one for a little bit different reason i think that the running back room is a very very interesting room why do i say that i've i've come out very strong on what i think roshan johnson could be on the chicago bears i do have a video talking about uh how i believe that roshan johnson could be a starter for the chicago bears by the time we get into the season i'll have that linked in i'll, I'll, try, I'll try to link it up here i think you can link it on this side somewhere over here like the information tab yeah I, i'll link it up here so if you want to check that out after the video or it'll be in the description below as well um, here's the big thing for me. This is the time where you're going to tell a lot though. Is Khalil Herbert picking up on different things that the defense is doing? You're not going to be able to sit here and get the full contact, right? But the main thing about Khalil Herbert is uh, the question on him being a run blocker. It's not about him being a running back. I think that he's an excellent running back. But is he picking up blitz? Is he picking up, right, like where he's supposed to be in the scheme when a certain thing is schemed up on the other side of the field when they're running the 11 on 11s? That, to me, I think is going to be very interesting. I don't see Deontay Foreman as the number one back, even though on ESPN's depth chart it does have Deontay Foreman as the number one back I feel like Deontay Foreman comes in here as your number two I think the Khalil Herbert starts the season at a minimum as your number one I think he has deserved that respect and so he'll be he'll get afforded the opportunity but I think here's the big thing Roshan Johnson's a guy who feels like he's going to be 
I, how I was going to say that was going to be such a pause moment, dog. It was going to be crazy out here. Bro, I feel like Roshan Johnson is going to be a guy who's going to put the pressure on Khalil Herbert and on Deontay Foreman for that starting position. I think that by the end of training camp, heading into preseason, we could see him moving up the depth chart quickly, being seen as a guy who's going to get used a lot more. There's a lot of time from here and there, but I think now is where that starts, right? And you see how the Bears are talking about Roshan Johnson every time he's in the room, every time, right? Like when they talk about him, they talk about him like, I mean, I believe Ryan Poles called him a pillar. It, 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 this is the craziest thing to hear about a rookie ever, bro. They said that he could be a pillar of the franchise moving forward. That's the guy that they believe that they drafted. That to me says that you have very, very high expectations on this guy. You think that this guy is going to have a very big role on the Chicago Bears. And I think that this is going to be very big on Khalil Herbert and Deontay Foreman to make sure that he stays as that rookie third running back in this scheme to where, yeah, you're getting in the game, but you're also getting in the game for defensive purposes, special teams, or not defensive defensive right a run blocking I should say special teams purposes different things like that you're not taking our spot at the lead back let me know who you guys feel is going to be the lead back in this season who, who are you looking at that you feel is going to be the number one back um, I, I think that Roshan Johnson by the time we probably get the re week five I think that he, he'll be the starting running back on this team I believe that's what I said in the last video as well but I, I mean like to me I, I think they're they're speaking so glowingly of him he's got the size he's got good speed he's going to be able to attack he's going to be able to complement Justin Fields he can be a guy who's out there a three down back but you also don't need him to be a three down back because you have three other running backs on this team so I think that Roshan Johnson trying to move his way up the depth chart could would be a really interesting one for the Chicago Bears a really good uh, um uh, uh, position battle to keep an eye on as always man let me know how you guys are feeling in the comments below I'll be down there talking with you as well also let me know what the biggest position battle that you're feeling is in OTAs what are the what's the position battle that you're watching the closest in OTAs here there's another one here that kind of when I look at this position battle as, as I'm going through it, I get a little bit more excited about it because of the depth that's actually there. We talked about Javon Dexter. We've talked about Zach Pickens being options at that defensive tackle, at that nose tackle, that three technique spot right but Andrew Billings ain't just giving that up. And we heard the glowing praise that came from Andrew Billings. And I think that Ryan Poles is building his team for a specific thing to get done to kind of enhance what he wants to do going through the season, enhance how this defense is going to be able to play. And that's why I think this makes this deep, this position battle so interesting. Who's going to stop the run the best? Tremaine Edmonds came out, talked about Andrew Billings, said that he was excited to see how this guy was going to be able to play. He feels that he's a leader in the locker room. He's a big dude. That was the one thing he was like, <laughs> how do you feel about Andrew Billings being on the team? He's like, big dude. Yeah, no, he's huge, right? Andrew Billings, a monster of a man, but he is an excellent run stopper next to Justin Jones, who was a really good run stopper back in uh, uh, um, at the, with the Chargers, right? And so I think that the Bears are coming in with this mindset of, yes, we play a lot of tough quarterbacks this year, but we play a lot of tough quarterbacks with good run games who haven't been the greatest in one-dimensional situations. And when I look at that, right, Kirk Cousins, when, the, when Akeem Hicks was able to stop that run, Kirk Cousins didn't know what to do. And guess what? Last season, when they were able to stop the run Kirk Cousins didn't know what to do I think with uh, uh Jordan Love out in Green Bay he's another one to key in on pretty much everybody in the division right when you key in kind of on what Jordan Love was able to do I think that the Bears kind of okay is, is he going to be this player that takes the next step I don't know but you know what helps a young quarterback a really good running game so if Aaron Jones gets himself going that's really going to cause some issues for the Chicago Bears if you're running that ball that well I like the matchup there I like the fight there um, where you got Andrew Billings, you've got Zach Pickens, you've got Javon Dexter, you've got Justin Jones, you've got Travis Bell, right? Like there's a lot of names there. And I think that that's going to be a really interesting battle to see who's going to end up coming out as the number one guy come training camp time. Now, Andrew Billings, right, right now listed as the number one guy, but is Javon Dexter going to be able to kind of flip the switch in his mind going from a two gap system to a one gap system where he's going to be able to all of a sudden understand this and boom, we're talking about Javon Dexter heading into training camp as your number one guy who's a second over second round pick for you. Uh, I, I think the same thing with Zach Pickens, right? Is he going to be able to figure that out? Is he going to be able to take that step? I, I think that that's one what really gets me excited because a lot of people are thinking, of Javon Dexter is this guy that's going to become this transcendent three tech this guy that's going to become the dominant nose for the Chicago Bears here but realistically 
is that with the position that he's going to get put in is he going to have himself ready enough come training camp time to be to uh, uh um to be the, the lead guy in that role to be that lead defensive tackle that's the part where i don't really know and i have probably my most amount of questions those are the three for me i mean when you look at the, the db position even with all the question marks on jalen johnson that, that i had and a lot of people around chicago have had um jalen johnson is going to be your number one db coming in because guess what there is not a lot of depth there you literally go jalen johnson uh, uh um kyler gordon jaquan brisker eddie jackson and the second line of defense is not good tyreek stevens is getting high praise but outside of that talking about elijah hicks kendall vildor kendall wilson you know what i mean like it it, it drops off pretty quick so i think that you're not going to see much of a competition. Their roles are going to be a little bit more defined in that situation. The The linebacker room may be interesting with what Noah Sewell could possibly be able to come into the NFL and do and how he's going to be able to go out there and, and create some havoc, create a fight. I don't know if he ends up taking either spot. I don't know if he ends up moving ahead of Jack Sanborn. He's definitely not going to be ahead of Tremaine Edmonds or TJ Edwards, right? But I don't know if he's able to overtake Jack Sanborn. I think that Sanborn is going to be uh, pretty solidified in that spot. I think that blues liked what he saw out of sanborn last season i think alan williams did too so at the end of the day man let me know how you guys feel in the comments below i'll be down there talking with you as well what are the position battles you're paying the closest attention to and of the three that i named which one intrigues you the most which one are you going to be watching closest let me know in the comments below i'll be down there talking with you like i said as always man it's your boy pat the designer back at it again to continue watching our chicago bears content click the link on the screen or check the link in the description below y'all stay safe out there chicago Go. Peace.